between the issues with the boxes and and your numbers, uh, we no longer need your services. <laughs> From the beginning, instead of helping, he hindered, and he wouldn't work out, not in this business. I will have to, you know, let you go. Brace yourself as we unveil the shocking moment when an undercover boss gets served a taste of his own medicine. I'm back at the Richwood Fulfillment Center to work as a single line packer. I want to find out if there's a way to increase production. I'm going to uh, take you upstairs to the packing area and hook you up with a trainer and get you going. Right. Cool. When you hear about a fast-paced warehouse or factory, you should take it seriously. Pretty fast-paced, actually. The area we're going to put you in is 90 units an hour. This is Gary. Hi, Gary. I'm How are you? Very nice to meet you. You're going to make me good at this? I'm going to try my best. You're going to scan this barcode here. Yeah. And it'll pop up in the box, and that's our okay. tone number. Okay. My product in. How do you, how do you know which one to put in? Because it's the one I scanned right here. You are fast at this. There's little room for conversations or catching up at a workplace like this one, and the presence of the undercover boss might be slowing down this employee. Our goal here is 90 an hour, one every 40 seconds. You are so fast, it's incredible. I'm a little nervous about moving at your speed, but I'm going to pick up momentum very fast, I'm sure of it. You're fine. You, you have this down way better than I did. Okay. It's not looking suitable for the undercover CEO, but it's his first time doing this. Oh, what's going on with all these football products here? Are you, are you a football fan? But my sons play football now. What, fast enough pace? No. It's all about getting a little rhythm is all it is. It's a really good company to work for. Oh, nope. See, like this one's an AF. It's not an E. When you meet a shift supervisor at a place like this, they're very focused and conscientious, meticulous with time, and don't give room for delay. Gary, right, right now you're sitting, you're sitting about 40 for this hour. Don't, don't panic yet. You think you're ready to go back and try this again? I think I am. <laughs> if you're not at 90 units per hour, what happens? They will lose their jobs. Well, I can tell you I'm packing as fast as I can pack, so. The CEO's fast is not fast enough, which would affect the work pace. You ready to go to lunch? That would be great. Are you having kids? Yeah, one daughter. She's three and a half. She's getting big so quick. She said your boys play football? Mm-hmm. One will be in the high school next year and one will be in the middle school. This might be the best and most enjoyable part of the job for the CEO because he's been on the wrong side of things all day. You see him often? Um, not as much as I'd like, especially right now. I'm working seven days a week. And then I volunteer for bingo because they have a boosters organization through there. So You seem to juggle a lot of balls. Try to. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> Try to. Oh, well, you're giving me good inspiration here. Now we're going to go hit your numbers. How okay. Would the CEO do better this time around and change the narrative about bosses who have to do jobs like this? Uh-oh. Gary, you doing okay? I think I might have a problem. Deep breath. Take your time. Uh-oh. Am I doing better? I think speaking frequently on the job is also a factor that has slowed down the CEO's job pace. Hey, Gary. A couple of things here. The label on the bottom of the box. We're going over the edge like that's never going to read. It's going to kick off down the reject line, okay. down at the other end. Obviously, something cannot happen. These complaints are valid and somewhat sad for the CEO, who would appreciate his employees more after his shift is over. Between the issues with the boxes, and, and your numbers, uh, we no longer need your services. Nothing I can do. No. Sorry. Right. I've been fired for the first time in my entire career from my own company. I was embarrassed. There's always a first time for everything, and this is a perfect lesson for the CEO. Don't you think? I just wanted to thank you again. Obviously, I see how hard this job is. I try to keep doing better. Sorry, I hope I didn't reflect poorly on you. I've been a few hours asking about family and stuff. It's a little heartbreaking. I take it a little personally. Next, we've got this CEO in this showdown who witnessed power dynamics getting turned upside down. We kept going and the things bouncing and shaking, and that was terrifying. I really want to go down. Okay, good. Let's go down. This is what I do all day long. Yeah. Well, you know what? You're a special guy. Being nervous about this kind of equipment. That's a good sound. Honestly, I'm a little nervous about him. It's a difficult shift for this boss as he steps into the shoes of a recruit, experiencing the challenges of the job firsthand. Yourself. Uh, I'm from El Salvador. Came here when I was 16 years old. 16? 16 years old. Here, I think it's a great company. What don't you like about your job? Winter time. Winter time. Too long hours. Uh, Not that many it. hours. Okay. Get slow. Can't. I got a debt, a credit card debt of almost 18. House. No, I have three kids. I have a wife. She doesn't work. Okay. 
Okay. The bonding moment might be the CEO's best experience before returning to the main job. Rosali's a 10 year team member and he's struggling because of something we did. A area manager. So that's really what you want to do. I think I'm ready. And I feel like uh, we need to do what we can to, uh, to fix that. Credit card went up. In winter time, I saw one check like 25 right. hours. The undercover CEO had a rough start on the job, but there are some high hopes for this shift and he seems ready to go. Okay, I hope you better on this one, Mark, than the last one. Yeah. The end, right? This is the call, the end rider. Okay. Placing one foot here and one foot over there, like that. Watch what I'm doing, just follow me. If I go here, it goes like that. Okay. If you let the left foot Go off the pedal, that's emergency brake, okay? Yeah. There's a vast difference between watching someone do something and attempting to do it yourself. I got it. Are you ready? I'm ready. You can do this. I have run a forklift before. I think I was probably 18 years old, so it's been a while. Hopefully I don't run into anything. You're doing it. You're doing really good. That's excellent. I think I'm getting it very quickly. The comments might seem friendly, but that's not the end of the job, and the CEO must stay focused. Teacher. You have done good. Thank you. Get it close to the other pilot. Whoa. Be careful. Now you have five pilots. Don't, like, kind of be jumping because they will fall. Just be careful. Follow me. See this stop sign? Oh, yeah, stop. So I, yeah, I ran. You better stop. The employee has a lot to do, and the undercover boss isn't making it any easier. Oh, you have to stop and then beep, then go. He was not stopping right, and he was not beeping right. You remember, what foot? I was a little nervous. I didn't take that pilot mark. Go to aisle 80, get it close to the other pilot. You got it back up because you all like all crook, crook, down. So just come here, follow me. For the employee, it's one of the most memorable days at work because he has to teach a recruit who doesn't seem to possess the required qualities. Lift it up and go to aisle 18, all the way down there. Whoa. I was getting a little frustrated because I taught him how to do this and he still wasn't doing right entering the aisles. Place them right here. I'm trying. Whoa. Look behind Whoa. you. Whoa. This CEO has shown a perfect example of how not to act on your first day of work. Come, come this way. You turn it this way, it goes the other way. You turn it that way, it goes. It's very confusing. Follow me, okay? I'm a little afraid about Mark. He just gets too nervous and shaky about things. I will have to, you know, let you go. That's the news every employee doesn't want to hear, but do you think the undercover boss deserved it? Let me know in the comments below. Fire Mark for safety reasons. I don't want him to have an accident or hurt anybody else. So all that and I get fired just for that one little mistake. Yeah. It's pretty dis I'm pretty disappointed. Yeah, I know. I, I feel the same way. I mean, it's a little embarrassing, but I'm glad to see that he takes safety so seriously. Next, we move outside to a more spacious location where the undercover boss of Mass Tech embarks on a fantastic shift. Today I'm in Ponca City, Oklahoma, and I'm going to be working on a construction crew on a transmission line. Everything we do requires power, and we need affordable power that moves our power from the places where it can be produced most effectively. Today we're upgrading an existing transmission line. These are big lines, so I want to make sure they're working safe. Would the CEO stumble upon a shocking revelation about the dark side of his workplace? I'm Hugh. Hey, Hugh. How are you? I'm Manny. Oh, you're the new guy. I'm okay. the new guy. Uh, I'm the foreman of the crew out here. We got our protective boot, leather gloves, ear protective, safety glasses, hard hat. This here is our little thing we do every day on uh, hazards on the job. Uh, I think you just sign it down here at the bottom somewhere. The location is only partially safe, and employees take extra precaution at this workplace. We've got some wire to put in the ground. We've got ground rods to drive. For this point right now, it's for lightning. Let's grab some old ground rod, and we'll go ahead and get those drove up. Slide that over the end of this. Down, just watch how high you pull. Is the undercover boss cut out for this type of job as he seeks to learn more about his workplace? Get that thing like you live. That make a man out of you. I probably got an 11-year-old boy that could beat that thing harder than him. Scared that I'm going to put you it all the way up, man. I'm going to hurt my hand. Ain't scared of it, or Manny was. While on the job, employees have deep conversations, which help them bond and bring him to the workplace. You ever operate back home? Oh, yeah. You think you'd be safe enough to run that front bucket and push it in here? I, I don't want you close to these structures. Because, man, if we hit these things, boy, we're going to be in a world of trouble. Kind of show you. Go ahead and crank it up and see what. Before the end of the shift, there were a few jobs to try out, and the CEO hoped he would do better at those. It does. If it's in, yeah, put your seatbelt on. Yeah. Put your seatbelt on. Yeah. 
Push it forward. All right. Roll it to the right. All right, curl it down. Try to lay it flat and scrape it smooth. This could be a defining moment in the undercover boss's shift, but he has yet to find the main details. I don't think you're ready for this yet. I don't want nobody hurting now. If I don't feel safe with you, I ain't gonna let that happen. You'll find out I'm picky when it comes to using equipment. Next up, this CEO goes undercover in an overlooked but challenging work environment. The crew is a guy that I could just leave and I know he's gonna take care of it. Is this all right. brand new? Pretty much half of it's brand new. To make it look more modern, so. make it easier to clean? Uh, no, <laughs> actually it makes it harder. It's not the best of jobs, but employees get it done with some interesting conversations. Too man, you have to touch that with your <laughs> hand. The Ricketts family can now count on Mark to take these bathrooms to the next level. I'll be back in five minutes. Okay. You know what, instead of me just keep running back, show where you're at and I need okay. to shoot you over to the next spot. If these guys were using their personal cell phones to communicate to each other within the ballpark. Going undercover is interesting because CEOs learn hidden things that could go unnoticed in the workplace. Mark here. Mark, give it a quick rinse down. Then I got to show you the final stages, which is squeegeeing. Got the process so it's like this. Okay. It's going to keep moving if you don't. All this water's gonna roll back. That's quicker, you gotta go a little faster than that. Normally on a uh, normal day, this guy would be broken. The pace is essential for this job, but the undercover boss doesn't possess it. He felt a little timid and laid back, not ready to like jump in and just take over. Break it about 15 minutes. Okay, this has to go. Oh, you broke the squeegee. I broke the squeegee. <laughs> You know what? We're going to break. Okay. Fresh meat for the grinder. Fresh meat. <laughs> One of the most enjoyable moments for an undercover boss is taking breaks at work because it gives room for deep conversations. Get the washrooms up there. Oh, look at that. There was plenty of sweat, man. Yeah, that's right. I got pretty good sweat going here. We made a lot of improvements to the ballpark in the offseason. Where you from, man? I live in New Jersey right now. You know, unemployed, like baseball and I'm um, cleaning bathrooms. These conversations create a bond between employees, but the CEO is involved this time. How long have you been here? I've been here 24 years in the bathroom. Motivating me to keep doing what I'm doing today. Well, I'm goddess, man. I was amazed. Oh, really? How good she swam at seven years old. Think about Angelique in the water. That motivates me to move from that bathroom we started at Right. All the way to this one before a break. Okay. Angelique, that's my daughter. She, okay, she's eight. Okay. It's an enjoyable time for the boss, and the employee seems to enjoy it too. They're both eight years old, and they both swim competitively, and uh, it was just kind of, it was cute. The story of his daughter was very similar to my daughter's story. You, you missed know, the whole summer. You miss your kids. So they was, yeah. you know, they were suggesting about why can't we bring our families up here? That's in the suggestion boxes about that little. <laughs> the CEO learned some overlooked things at his company through relaxed conversations like this. Daryl is exactly the kind of person that I wanted to go undercover to meet because he's been here for a long time. Ready for round two. After break, we got three hours of straight stock in 26 bathrooms. It's going to be key for us to tap into the experience and the knowledge of all the people like Daryl. Okay. I'll tell you, when I, when I ride down, I'm going to drop this stuff off. Okay. The return to work might not be as interesting for the boss as the conversation he just had with the employee. I'm sitting here smiling and keep crying and knowing how much damage you did. It's not washroom ready for regular probably do good outside or on the field. Oh! A struggling employee finds the job hard, but it also affects the job done by everybody else. And at this moment, here's the reaction. I don't think this is, you know, right for you. All right, man, this, this is it, man. I'm about to let you go. This ain't, you know, a spot for it's you. It's not for my, it's not <laughs> a job. No, no, man.